<laughs> What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we're gonna be taking this image from here to here. So if you wanna edit along with me, you can head to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos, grab the free raw file and we can practice together. Let's hit the intro and get into it. All right, so hopefully by now you've gone ahead, grabbed the practice file if you wanna edit along. You can find it at signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. From there, import it into Lightroom and we'll get started together. So here's the original edit that I did on this photo. We're gonna do something similar today, but not exactly the same because this particular edit has a lot of masks going on and I could never possibly remember exactly what I did. It was basically just trial and error, do a little bit here, a little bit there, tiny little increases in the way it looks and eventually it gets to look okay. So that's kind of our goal here today. I'm gonna to show you my basic process. Now for today, just to speed things up, I am going to be using one preset just to get like a starting look. But you can see it's pretty subtle what it actually does. It's just manipulating the colors very, very slightly. So here's without the preset and here's with the preset. It just gets my tones kind of where I want them, a little bit closer, a little bit faster. If you wanna grab some free presets, I'll leave those in the description below. This preset is from the Natural Collection. So you can check that out if you want to. No pressure, you can edit this photo without needing the preset. That's not the point. The point is just to speed it up because we've got a lot of ground to cover and most of this is gonna be done in adjustment brushes, okay? So you're focused on the techniques, not exactly creating the exact same edit. Does that make sense? All right, so I've applied the preset. I'm probably gonna go with this one, which is literally just the same preset, but intensified with this profile slider. And from there, we've already got some nice tones. We've basically just warmed up the reds and the oranges. So here's our final photo. We're already kind of going in that direction, right? We've darkened things down. We've warmed up the reds, the oranges, the yellows. I can maybe warm up my white balance just a little bit more, say like 3,400. And then I'm going to basically set the exposure for this area right here, for my highlights in the image, because I don't want those to be blown out. So probably around there. So as you can see, we've got a lot of work ahead of us to make me, the subject in this photo, not super, super dark. If you're wondering where this was taken, by the way, it was taken at the Calgary Public Central Library in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So, fun spot. All right, so now that we've got our basic vibe in terms of just warming it up, setting the white balance, getting the tones sort of where we want them, we're gonna start the real work, which is the adjustment brushes. Every photographer who I've sat down with, actually seen their editing, who are way better than I am, they approach it very differently than when I started out in photography. When I started out, it was like, okay, so in order to get that look, I'm going to have to like do some massive effects up here, right? And I would just like go crazy with all these different effects. But in reality, the way that great photographers seem to edit, it seems to be a trend, just saying, they do little incremental changes. Little by little, they build the image until it looks amazing. So we're gonna try and do that today. So first off, I need to brighten myself, I know that. I could try going into my adjustment brushes by hitting K, hit create new mask, and go down here where it says select subject and see if Lightroom will locate me. However, you can see it's done a pretty crappy job to be honest. It's gotten some stuff in the roof, the background, and even the selection of me is not very good. So I'm gonna have to do this by hand. First, I'm gonna see what I can do with like broad gradual changes and then focus in on like the more really, really detailed brushwork because that'll be a lot faster than if I tried to brush things right away. It'll also feel a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna start with just a radial filter right here, nice big one. The contrast is down, the highlights are down. I can take the highlights back up actually and just lower the contrast. And so you see what's happening? It's basically like I put a spotlight on myself and it's pretty unnoticeable. Like it, it makes a difference without it being like, oh, that was edited. So that's a really easy way to just brighten myself up right at the start, very little work involved. So from here to here, that's where we've gone. I'm gonna do another one by hitting shift, M on my keyboard, and do the same thing, but just a smaller one this time and maybe a little bit taller, just right where I am in the middle. Okay, so just like that, if I were to reset these masks, let's delete them both. Okay, that's before. That's after, right? So pretty gradual change, but it's made a big difference. And we haven't had to do any like really finicky brushwork that takes a lot of time. So this will also help your workflow. Okay, from there, now I need to actually start brightening myself up because I'm not looking bright enough. So I'm going to hit K on my keyboard to pull up an adjustment brush. I could set it to auto mask and see how it does. Hit O so that you can actually see what you're brushing. And you're gonna see that Lightroom is gonna try and figure out what I'm going for. 
but I think because the photo was just taken in a dark situation, there's not a ton of contrast between me and the background. It just has a really tough time actually figuring out what I'm trying to mask and what I'm not. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to turn off auto mask. And then do this again just by hand. So I'm going to zoom in to 300%. And this is a tedious thing. There's no real way around it. It's like, okay, you just got to go through and paint on your mask. Don't worry about it getting it absolutely exact unless you're trying to do like a really, really obvious effect. If you ever want to see your overlay, just hit O on your keyboard. And I'm literally just going to trace this out. And this is why I skipped ahead a little bit by applying a preset just to get my starting look because I know that in this particular image, the preset is not the most important part. In fact, I would say in a lot of images, that's the case. Your preset can like give you a really quick starting point. And sometimes when the light is great, the composition is perfect, you don't have to correct anything. Like, yeah, a preset can be a one-click situation, but that's very rare. It's more often the other way around where the preset just saves you a couple of minutes doing the things you do every single time. And then the individual work on the image, that's where this kind of stuff happens. And that's what really takes the time but makes the biggest difference. And I would never do this on an entire session. Just when you have like a really amazing image, you want to build a portfolio out. Okay, then maybe it's worth spending the extra time. So you can see I'm not being like super perfect in terms of getting this mask. If you're wondering on how I'm making the brush bigger and smaller, by the way, I've just got my trackpad here and two fingers up or down makes the trackpad bigger. And if you hold the shift key on your keyboard, that will adjust the amount of feather on that brush. So we're just going to keep going through. And if you have a mouse, you can do the exact same thing with your mouse wheel. You don't have to do, have to have a trackpad to do it. That's one thing that is great about Lightroom. Once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, man, does it speed up your editing. And it's amazing how many people I see who like, and they're doing this professionally, still don't learn the keyboard shortcuts. And I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because I just decided to learn them in the beginning for no apparent reason, but it, it makes a massive difference. Like it will massively speed up the amount of images you can edit, which means you're going to enjoy your job more. You can do jobs for less money and have it still be worth it. Or you can just make more per hour because you're not spending all your time editing. Okay, so we've done a pretty mediocre job at masking myself out here. And we're going to do the exact same kind of thing. We're going to take the contrast down. Highlights I can even take up. And whites I'm going to take up. Now, why am I doing this instead of just taking the exposure up? Let's take a look. If I just take the exposure up, it's going to take everything, including the shadows. And it's just going to feel kind of weird. Like sometimes it'll work and you can get away with a little bit. But by taking the contrast down, highlights up and the whites up, theoretically we're boosting the areas that were already bright a little bit more than we're boosting the shadows and the blacks. And so we're going to retain some contrast while brightening the image, making it a little bit more uh, transparent. So you can see here's before and here's after. Pretty massive change. But hopefully it still doesn't look like we've overdone it. We've over edited it. I am going to try and track myself down here <laughs> click that mask. And I'm going to warm it up a little bit because I feel like the rest of this area is lit and kind of tungsten sort of temperature balance. Whereas I'm looking a little blue because I'm just being lit by natural light for the most part. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit and maybe add a little bit of magenta as well. So here's without that mask. Here's with that mask. Pretty big difference. And maybe I should dial it back. For now, I'm going to stick with it. Okay, so we've gotten pretty far. Like here is the beginning of our edit. Here's where we're at now. So we're getting there. The next thing that I want to do is add some style to these lights, like really just bring out the, it's called halation. Basically, if you have a vintage lens, you might actually find that your highlights are more rolled off. They're less contrasty around hot spots in the image. So let me show you what I mean. It's easier to show than to tell. I'm going to make a radial filter by hitting shift M on my keyboard. I'm going to click and drag that filter. And eventually here, hopefully Lightroom will catch up with me and just put it over top of this light. Position it like that, have my feather at 100%, and then rotate it a little bit so it's kind of the angle of this light as well. Okay, something like that. Now from here, basically, we're just going to add a pretend lens flare. So we're going to take our contrast down, highlights up, exposure up a little bit, temperature up, texture down, clarity down, and this is the big one, dehaze down. Okay, so you see how we've kind of added this nice glow to the actual filter itself. And we can just move it around and make that light look really, really cool. So do one of those. I could take my blacks down and try and preserve a little bit more of the 
contrast in the image in that area. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to take that, hit Command C and Command V, or Control C, Control P if you're on a PC. Basically just to copy and paste this radio filter over because I don't want it to extend so much onto me. So I'm going to make two smaller filters to cover the light rather than just one big one. So like that. I'm going to do the exact same thing now. Hit Command C, Command V. Or if you're on a PC, I think that's Control C and Control P. Copy and paste. Do the exact same thing on this side. So paste it over there. One more. Command C, Command V. Okay, now on this side, it doesn't really need to be as bright. You can see that for whatever reason, there's more light and even more blue light hitting this part of the wall and this section. So what I am gonna do is just hit K on my keyboard, make a new adjustment layer and brush over this light here. Reset my brush by holding Alt, click Reset. And then just take the blacks down a little bit to sort of balance out the left with the right. That might be a little bit too far So we can maybe take our shadows up, try that, somewhere around there. Okay, now that has really brought out kind of the vibe of the image. However, I want to accentuate it maybe by making the blacks and the shadows a little darker. So we can take our shadows down a little bit. Of course, that's also going to make my face a little bit darker. So I'm hitting Shift M on my keyboard. I'm gonna do a tiny little radio filter and just put it on my face. I'm not gonna worry too, too much about, you know, going in and brushing it exactly because hopefully this will be pretty transparent where I can get away with doing something like this and not having it as perfect as it could be. Make the shadows higher. We're basically just trying to reduce the contrast, but also make me a little bit brighter. Okay, somewhere around there, probably too far, but whatever. Now I'm gonna have to match the arms to the face. So you can see that this arm compared to this face, quite a bit darker, same with here. So I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard. I'm going to mask away on this beautiful, beautiful arm. Okay, just turning the highlights up. Contrast we can actually keep up. And whites we'll try taking up. And then do the same thing on this arm. Okay, something like that. Before after. Okay, I am looking a little bit too bright still, so we'll go back in here and grab that radial filter. Easiest way to get to this panel, honestly, is just hit the K button on your keyboard, the K key, K button, and then you can go ahead and cycle through all of your different masks. So I'm going to grab this one and take it down a little bit. So push it slightly too far, maybe take the highlights up. That's better. All right, so we've come a long, long way. Couple more things. One, there's still some hot spots on this sort of wood circle thing. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna probably do two radial filters here by hitting Shift M. You guessed it. Drag them over into these hot spots. And eventually Lightroom will cooperate. It's sort of freezing because I'm recording my screen. Just gonna take the highlights down. And then I'm also going to maybe take the blacks down in here too. To see how that looks. Or we could try and do the same thing as these lights up here and have kind of some halation, add a little bit of dehaze in those areas. Lower the texture. Let's just experiment for a second here. Do something new and different. Uh, probably not, but it is helping me notice that the color is just feeling a little bit too green. So I'll add some magenta and then I'll undo this stuff. Okay, something like that is not too bad. And honestly, it wasn't too bad lowering the contrast or the clarity a little bit, so maybe we'll try that. And dial back on our magenta. So here's before and here's after. Not a big shift, again, tiny little changes. That's what we're going for without overdoing it. So even as I'm editing, I'm like, oh, that's a little too far, let's dial it back just in case. And I do that again and again and again. Okay, I'm just copying this, and paste it right over here. Okay, now let's zoom out. 
I find it helpful. You want to have the image as big as you can on the screen while you're editing to make sure your colors look great, but sometimes to check your composition, the overall feel of the edit, zoom way out, pretend you're looking at it on a tiny little phone screen and it will really affect the way that you see the image. So I'm looking at it, it looks okay, but we're definitely missing some saturation, particularly right here and then up here on this wood thing. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, the wood wall. So I'm going to paint on those couple of areas in particular. I'm going to reset them and then I'm just going to add some warmth. That's kind of an easy way to add saturation in this case because that's the color it's supposed to be anyways. And then I'm going to take my flow down to no particular spot, maybe 30, 40. And then I'm going to brush a little bit more on these other areas that didn't need quite as much love, but are still looking a little bit not colorful enough. And our goal is balance. So I'm going to zoom back in so I can grab the little spots kind of right around me. Hit O to see how my mask is coming along. Okay, not too bad. Zoom back out. Take a look. Okay, so here's what that did before and after. Here's before and here's after. See how it kind of corrected some stuff you didn't really even realize was there? Okay, from there, there's a million different things we could do. We're getting pretty darn close to my original edit. And so it just depends how much you want to continue to finick with it. Like here's before, here's after. We've come a long way. I think we could still probably make this whole thing a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic. So we could do that, but then we're going to have to brighten the exposure down here on our subject. So... Again, that's going to take a little bit more masking. And this time I'm not masking my entire body, just the parts that are more in shadow. And of course, I'm not zoomed in, so it's going to be a pretty sloppy mask job, but that might be fine because I'm just basically going to try and take the highlights and the whites up, but only in the areas that are mostly shadowed. And so by doing that, hopefully I can brighten things without making it feel too unnatural and without blowing out the highlights on me. Okay. That's looking pretty darn good. Last kind of things, we could do a little bit of dehaze, see if that adds a little bit more pop. Another thing is hit the M key on your keyboard, do graduated filter. And you can stretch your filter down to wherever you want. Here's a little trick. So when you first make the filter, let's restart that. Hit M and then you click and drag it will drag out the filter. And you see how these lines are getting wider apart and closer together? Well, that's actually just determining kind of the amount of graduation, how long it takes to go from zero to 100% opacity on that effect. So the further, it's kind of like a really, really long feather, really gradual, really subtle. But once you let go of it, you can actually grab this second line back here and change where that's located. Or you can grab the third line at the very bottom, bring them closer together, then grab the second line and do that. So now we've got 100% opacity, if you hit O on your keyboard, wherever this line starts. And then this is just the graduated section. So a little fun fact for you. So I'm going to take it down to probably around there. Hit O. Reset it by holding Alt. Good. And then we're going to try probably just adding a little bit of dehaze. Or a lot of dehaze. <laughs> Maybe a lot of dehaze and then try taking our clarity down and then our shadows up. Because I don't want to like blow blow out. What's the opposite? I don't want to completely clip the blacks here. I just want to add a little bit more drama. Something like that. So I'm feeling like that's pretty good. You, there's a million different things you continue to do to the image if you want to. So I am seeing like there's a few little things that could be fixed down on my shirt. Little color spots. So you can see like this part a little bit blue, this part a little bit green, that part Right, so what I could do, just grab the parts that are blue, take my flow up. Okay, that's blue. A little bit of blue. A little bit of blue. Easiest way to get rid of blue, just add yellow. So we've selected that, we'll reset the brush. Add a little bit of yellow, and in theory, when it decides to load, you're going to see, okay, the blue's gone. Now it looks really too yellow, so that's fine, we'll take that back. I'm going to find a compromise and then maybe a little bit of magenta as well. And that should cancel it out, blend it in. Same thing on the shoulder here. It looks a little bit like greenish orange maybe or just 2D saturated. Can't really tell. So we might need to add a little bit of blue here to that specific spot on the shirt. 
So same thing, we can add a little bit of blue. And maybe even increase the highlights because those were all kind of dark areas and increase the whites. Cool. And then one last kind of brush over the entire shirt just to smooth things out. And of course, you can keep going for days and days and days. We could add a little bit of sharpness onto me, obviously, because I'm looking pretty, pretty dull, just like my personality. So we'll reset this brush, holding Alt, add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity. And because I was already soft, I can get away with that without it looking like I way overdid it. So here's before and here's after, like it's really subtle. Then last of all, because we had these radio filters, it kind of did some weirdness to my shoe here. Just made it too bright. And to my leg, it's too bright compared to the rest of me. So I'm just going to trace on there. Again, hold Alt to reset the settings on my brush. And then I can pull my highlights back a little bit. Maybe take my blacks down. Somewhere around there. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty happy. I could keep editing, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, you sort of see the process. Now you can apply it for yourself. Uh, if you want to, of course, we can even add in a little bit more flair from these lights. That's the thing. You're never really done. It's just like, when do you walk away? I don't know. <laughs> Leave it in the comments below if you actually know when you should walk away. Okay, so if we actually take this triangle, hit it like that, take our amount slider, drag that back. Okay, I've decided. That's it. That's it for me. Hopefully, that has given you some different techniques you can apply. Practice along with this raw file if you want to edit it at signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. Leave a comment below. If this was helpful, let me know what was kind of the aha moment or the one thing you can take and apply to your next edit. If you want more content like this, always hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.